Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is the Horror Game Show by Board Games. The game plays two to four players, ages 18 and up, and it takes 90 to 120 minutes to play. And in the Horror Game Show, you are playing as a producer, assigning contestants to a horror game show. You'll be having the contestants hit the board and run. Go off and defeat other contestants, utilizing the weapons they find around the board, as well as dealing with hunters. Hunters are a unique class of killer that spawn on the board and will be affecting different producers, um, utilizing them in order to defeat other contestants. You can fight your own contestants, you can fight other people's contestants, gaining their bodies as trophies, and scoring points throughout the game by completing contracts, uh, gaining victory points from events and awards and whatnot as you go on through the game. You'll set up the game, set up your producer board as well as the contestants you have, and then start gathering and beginning. The game will go through 12 rounds, and at the end of the 12th round, you'll score up your points. However, if there's only one contestant remaining at any point in the game, it will end early and you'll scale up, score your points then. That's basically the idea of the game. Are you ready to begin the horror game show? Let's find out now. Setting up the game, the horror game show, is quite simple. The first thing you do is each player is going to select a producer board. There are four colors. You have green, yellow, blue, and red. Once you've gathered your main board, you're also going to gather the cards of the main board that you're playing with. Each of your cards are going to have the color associated with your board in the middle left-hand side. After you've gathered those cards, you're going to be selecting characters. I suggest randomly divvying them all up. You'll get three for each player. After you've gathered all three of your contestants, you'll set them on the left-hand side of your board and add their HP trackers to their highest red counter on the right-hand side of the game board. Each of your contestants is going to come with three unique cards, which you will add and shuffle in to your deck, so that every deck after the game is set up will have 15 cards. Then you'll be taking these cards here. Uh, these are going to be hidden cards, they're contracts, that you're going to try and achieve during or by the end of the game. Each player will get three of them, and you can hide them face down next to your game board or on top of your game board, and you're only going to reveal them whenever necessary. Each character is also going to have a standee along with a figure, as well as a token representing that character. Place your characters and standees and tokens next to each of the boards. Each player is finally going to be getting one of these cards here. This is a player reference which indicates what all of the weapons and items do that are face down, which are referred to as blips. Then, finally, set all your money on the bottom right hand side of your player board to zero, and all of your fans will go to three. Then every single player board is ready. Give one person the media attention, that's the first player marker, and you'll begin by setting up the main two game boards. There are two main game boards. One is the round tracker board and one is the arena. To set up the round tracker board, it's pretty simple. You're going to be taking, on the very far left-hand side, these awards that you'll get at the end of the game. There's a Doom Slayer, which is for the contestant who kills the most hunters, the red characters. There is a Showmaster for the character with the most trophies, and characters can be referred to as either the hunters or the contestants. And finally, the Last Man Standing, which is the last contestant alive at the end of the game. If there's no last contestant alive, you're not going to use this card. There, then you have the awards. You'll just shuffle the award deck. It has this green, like, award symbol on it. Shuffle the deck and place it on the top left-hand side. There's a round marker tracker that has a clock. You'll place that on the number one, indicating the first round of the game. Moving on to these cards here. These are going to be events that take place throughout the game. Shuffle the rest of this deck and place it on the right-hand side of the top of the game board. And finally, these guys here. These cards are going to be useful throughout the game, and you're going to be able to draw them when cards permit, and use them similar to action cards. After that, then you have the main game board. On the main game board, you're going to have each player select one of the four game boards and orientate it how they would like to create a singular squared board. From there, you're going to get tokens. These are called blips. You're going to set aside any tokens that go with the specific hunter characters. You'll set aside any of these tokens, aka blips, for any of your characters, as well as four tokens that are going to be your ladder tokens or teleportation blips. And then you'll shuffle up 24 tokens, plus these four tokens, which are your ladders, to make 28. 
And from there, players can choose whether they want to hide their characters as blips in the game or just simply put them out. And it'll be kind of like a drafting thing where players go, I'll put mine out, I'll put mine out, I'll put mine out, I'm gonna hide mine. I'm gonna hide mine, I'm gonna put mine out until all the characters have been distributed. In this example, I've just simply set out all the characters right as you can see them, so there's no hidden characters. But if you wanted to, you would take one of these tokens and place it down secretly, along with the rest of the blips, on the game board as opposed to the standee, which would remain on the character board at this portion of the game, until this is revealed and you would put this character out. But we're not doing that, we're just going to simply set them all out. We're going to then add all of the blips, including these random ladders, and put them down face down on the game board. Now, as you can see, you knew the ladders were, but in the actual setup of the game, they'll just all shuffle together, so that every single blip space, these red spaces on the game board, have been filled. Once every space has been filled with either a character or a blip, aka a token, the game is ready to begin with the starting player. The game begins with each player making sure that their deck is shuffled and then drawing five cards from their deck. These cards are what you're going to use as actions and in your turn, provided that you have them. After you've drawn cards, starting with the first player, he's going to be the one that's going to start the events up. So the first phase is the event phase. Draw an event card, read the card out, and do whatever it says. Place the card into the discard pile, and then you're going to move on to the challenge. The challenge is going to be the green card here, and this will indicate what the specific sponsors want you as a producer to do during this round in order to gain money. Money is referenced with a number and the symbol next to it. If you can complete the uh, specific thing they want you to do, then you're going to gain money at the end of that round, place this up so that everybody can see it so that they know what they need to do during the round. Then there's the bid. The bid is going to be for media attention. This is to be the person who starts the game and is the person who gets to contract a killer, meaning bring that killer uh, or hunter onto their game board, or select a, hunt, a hunt hunter that's already previously on their game board and put it out onto the field. Players are going to be bidding with cards. So me, as the first player with the first media um, attention marker, will select how many cards I'd like to bid. I can say, I'll bid one card. I'll put this card into my discard pile. Then, each player will have the option to either pass or bid higher. This next player could say, no, I'll bid two. Or no, I bid three. Or I'm going to pass. If everybody passes, or after all the bidding has been done, the player who has bid the most at the end of the round is going to be the one, or the end of this phase, is going to be the one with immediate attention. In which case, that player would select to hire or bring out a hunter. So I could choose to simply take this hunter here, uh, the blood salad, and place it on the right-hand side of my player board. Hunters go on the right, and my other characters will go on the left. After that, we'll move on to the next phase, which is going to be the turns. Turns will start with the person with the media attention. This is going to indicate which player is going to be taking part in the actions. On your turn, you have cards in hand, which you're going to be utilizing in order to uh, move your characters along the board. You could also, on your turn, use Intrigue cards. These are the cards on the right-hand side of the uh, turn tracker board, which consider to function like action cards, but for the most part, they can be used as reactions as well, which are considered like instant cards in Magic the Gathering. On your turn, you can play any number of these cards that you have in your hand. But there's a rule. On the top left-hand side of every card is a plus symbol. You can play this plus symbol, and then play the next card with the plus symbol, and the next card, but once you run into a pause symbol, that will end your ability to play cards. Pause symbols simply look like this here. These mean that you are done and you can no longer play cards. So when you play one of those cards, make sure it's one of the last cards that you want to play. Cards have multiple uses. One use is movement. You can choose to move either a red character you own, Hunter, or you can use a blue character that you own, which is one of these contestants here, or either one, depending on what the card says. Or, as long as your character is still alive, and you have this card, you can choose to use the action on the bottom of this card here. For instance, I could draw two entry cards, discard one, and then get two money. And I could keep playing these cards up until the point where I do not want to play anymore. If I choose to take a movement from one of these cards here, like for instance, instead of drawing two intrigue cards and gaining money, I can instead move a blue or red character. And in this case, I have blue characters. So I can move any of these characters their base movement. On every single board, 
in the game that is going to be representing different types of things on their boards. You'll have these symbols here, which are how many items they can hold, uh, the top three symbols, which is going to be speed, your fighting, and of course your crit, and then on the far right hand side is your health. Your health marker goes to zero, you die. Your speed is how many spaces you can move whenever you play a card that has that symbol. Uh, the fight is whenever you walk into an adjacent player's space, you may fight them with that many dice. And the crit is no matter what, if you roll that number or higher, you're going to do damage to an opponent that is uh, fighting you at that moment. Play your cards, then place them in front of you. Never discard them unless it says to discard. Leave them in front of you after you have played them, and the next player will get a chance to go, and they will play all of their cards, the next player will play all of their cards, and rinse and repeat. Once all players have played all their cards, then the end of the round phase begins. You are going to A, check the contract to see at the end of the round if anyone was able to complete this, and if so, you'll gain points based on the bottom of this contract. After that, you're going to move on to the uh, challenge. Or should, oh, sorry, so that's challenge. This is contract. Challenge, you'll check to see if you did that, as well as the contracts. These guys here, these are the contracts. These will tell you at the end of the game or during the game if you completed something or other, you'll score victory points as well, which is money. So either way, you check both of those and see how well you did with them. Then you're going to go ahead and discard cards from your hand if you would like. So for instance, if you had cards in your hand that you didn't play, if you maybe only played three cards and you had two cards that one you didn't want to play and one you wanted to save, you could discard one. All the cards in front of you would also be discarded. And then you're going to go ahead and draw up to five cards. Two, three, four, and five. And you'll have a new hand of cards for the next round. Then, of course, you're going to go ahead and move this round marker and uh, basically begin the next uh, phase of play where people are going to continuously uh, reveal these things here and reveal events, gather intrigue, play their cards, etc., etc. The game is going to end in two ways, like I said. When this round marker gets all the way to the very end or whenever all of the contestants but one are dead. Another thing to note in this game, too, is in rounds three, six, and nine, spaces of the game board are going to be removed. And when they are removed, all of the blips slash tokens and all of the hunters slash contestants are dead. These spaces instantly get flipped over and whatever is remaining on the other boards is what remains in the game. And eventually on round nine, there will only be one space of the grid that is still available for players to move around in. Thusly, space gets quite tight in this game. And that's pretty much all you need to know about the basics of the game. I'll discuss my review now, and I'll discuss how combat works, and how the cards function, and the characters, and all the unique aspects to the horror game show. The horror game show is a game about winning, of course, uh, gathering the most money, gaining fans as you go along the way, but what it's not about is surviving. Surviving is not necessarily a part of the goal in this game. You'll have contestants, and you will have hunters, and you'll be attempting to fight other players, or even yourself, in the game, and you'll be utilizing dice to attack. I want to discuss a little bit on how attacking kind of functions, and what's cool about it, and then we'll move on to like pretty much the overview of all of the stuff in the game. But fighting is pretty simple. Functions kind of like the game Risk. If I have a character with a four attack, and then another character I'm fighting has three, and you fight by just walking into each other's spaces. So you can walk in, fight, walk in, fight with each card that you're able to use. So you can have multiple fights with one character in a round. You'll roll the dice, and then based on what you roll, you're going to assign the highest with the highest, the next highest with the next highest, and so on and so forth. And basically you'll check. If any of the dice crit, they just do damage. And then for every die that's over your opponents, your opponent will take damage. And if you have an extra die or dice uh, that your opponents do not have, as long as that die isn't a one, they will take damage. And damage is going to push through into your character boards. Thusly, if your character goes from their highest or any point on this damage board to zero, that character dies. That character's uh, cards will get removed from the deck as you draw them. The character's token is going to be assigned to the character that killed that character. And uh, you will no longer use this little token, this little blip of this character, because you do generally use the blips during certain phases of the game, specifically events, choosing characters to kind of function differently throughout the game. So fighting is pretty straightforward, but you'll be gaining items on the game board. There are certain things that you're going to be uh, gathering as you move along. There could be traps that you'll have to deal with. You might find a tunnel that will let you teleport to another area, or for instance, a weapon that has a number on it. And that number will increase your fight. 
You'll have pillows that are going to give you defense, uh, doping, which is a syringe that allow you to move again, a first aid kit that heals wounds, and pills that will allow you to take three rerolls when fighting. And that's kind of how fighting works in this game. It's pretty simple. You're playing your cards to move, you're playing your cards for their actions, and if you ever stumble upon a blip or a token, you will get to take that token or suffer the consequences of a trap, or you can walk into another player's space, including your own characters, and you can fight. Fighting is going to give you value. You're going to get fans whenever you fight. You are going to get uh, an extra fan if you win. You'll get a trophy if you defeat the opponent that you're fighting against. And certain contracts, certain events, and certain awards are going to grant you benefits as well if you're able to meet these accomplishments. This game is simply all about trying to score the best points based on what your characters have and their abilities. Each of them have their own unique cards. Uh, one of the characters that I used, he had a, a camcorder, and so whenever somebody killed another player, as long as I had that character alive and the card in hand, I could play that as a reaction and score victory points and fans. Speaking of fans, fans have a variety of things you can use them for. You can spend fans in order to gain these intrigue cards, which are just overpowered actions. You can spend fans to take one of these blips and flip them over on the board so that you'll know what they are. Could be a trap, so you might want to know about that. You could spend two fans in order to gain money, which is important in the game, and you can spend fans to re-roll dice if you do not like the die roll that you get in combat. Fans are nice. They can be appropriated as money or as things that can help you and benefit you throughout the game. Another thing to note too is you're able to gather hunters. Now, in order to contract a killer, you'll have to contract them and then welcome them into play. So, in order to get one character into play with this media attention, you'll need to gain this one twice at the beginning of every round. So you have to spend the cards in your hand that are actions in order to acquire these characters who are in general more powerful than your basic contestants. Each of these characters here have a unique aspect to them. They have their own action cards, just like these guys do, which means they function uniquely. But they're also going to start with some of them tokens. Some of them are going to have little bunny rabbits, or some of them are going to have like a meat hook or a voodoo doll. And these things do different things. It could block a space and make people take damage when they walk through. It could uh, be assigned to another character. And if that character walks in a certain area, or if a card is played, they can take damage, like the voodoo doll, and so on and so forth. So the hunt have their own unique style of play. It reminds me of that Rob Zombie movie. I think it's like called like the number six or the number nine or something where contestants are dropped down and they have to fight against the hunters. This has that feeling, but it's also got the feeling of the contestants fighting against each other because each of these guys here, each of us, are producers and we're attempting to try and put on the best show possible. We're like the Hunger Games uh, meets a Rob Zombie film, basically. Attempting to defeat each other, defeat our own contestants and score the most points. Now, of course, defeating our opponent's contestants are generally speaking a better option, but if you have a contract or there's an event in play and the only character you can kill is one of your own, eh, maybe you need to do that in order to score the points you require. The fact that the board is ever changing, ever evolving, there's different ways you can play, you can hide your characters on the game board at the beginning of the game, thusly you will not know where your character is, but no one else will either, and a character that's hidden is a character that doesn't die. Uh, except for <laughs> if they get to round three and your character is on a space or that board that gets flipped over. So you have to be careful how long you keep characters hidden, where you check to see which characters are where, and that will provide you with a way of staying silent. Uh, some characters are actually hiding characters. They kind of will disappear in the game. They'll pop back up and do safe attacks. Safe attacks are just simply attacks where you both roll, but you take none of the opposing damage and only deal any damage that you might be able to deal. Uh, this game is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. It's got a lot to it, and there's a long game here. This game is going to take you two to maybe two and a half hours for your first playthrough, and maybe two hours to an hour and a half every time you play afterwards. The rounds are pretty straightforward, and your turn is simple as to how you do things, but because there's so many options and there's so many characters on the board, there is just a lot that you can do in this game. This is a really, really solid little game. I haven't played a whole lot of games that are like this that have this kind of a like battle royale type feel that you're not really opposed to everybody, but sometimes you are and sometimes you're actually working with other players because sometimes you're gonna have your specific sponsors looking to help other players. Like for instance, this contract can only be fulfilled if the person on your right is the last man standing. So you actually like, oh shoot, I have to work with the, this, character, this player over here to make sure that they score uh, the 
eight or 12 points for last man standing, which will then give me 12 points. Or maybe it's gonna be something like, if you're able to defeat a hunter on the left-hand side of you, or if all your characters start revealed on the board as opposed to hidden. And there's a lot of ways that can change up the game. The fact that each character has their own unique cards, has their own unique actions, and functions differently as their own separate entity is awesome. The killers, the hunters, are even more unique in the fact that they have their own items and their own deck of cards, and they spawn kind of outside the board and they walk in and they're like, hey, what's up, I'm the killer. Awesome. Artwork is solid. The quality of this game is excellent. This is a prototype, but I can see there's a ton of tender love and care put into this game, and thusly I expect nothing more than really nice quality when the game is fully made. This is a Kickstarter game, and I expect this is going to do quite well as long as it gets enough media buzz, because this is a heck of a lot of fun. If you don't mind a longer game, because it's definitely a longer game, I also feel like some characters right now might be a little more powerful than others, characters that just simply give you victory points, and a big strategy to this game that I've noticed by scoring, I scored a lot of points on my playthroughs, was simply by gaining fans. That was the only thing that I did. I think fighting was important, but at the end of the day, fans gave you a lot more points, and if you could obtain them um, via maybe using cards in your deck or selecting certain characters, then that was the way to go. But I think anything that involves balancing and whatnot, just like any other Kickstarter, can kind of be trans transversed as the game is, is made and fully done. But also, maybe it's just how we play as well. Uh, so I can't really speak on that too much, especially with a game like this. You gotta play a lot of times to make sure you get balancing correct, and I don't know if I'm equipped to say specifically that. I just felt like that's how it felt. Also, I think another thing that kind of sucks with this game is if you have a character that's hidden and it hits round three and you happen to never check a location on the board that's getting removed because you A, just couldn't, or B, missed it, your character dies instantly and you lose a character that you could utilize in the game, which can make it more difficult for you to be able to deal with. Um, the boards being removed is awesome, and I do appreciate that, but I just missed that first. That first one is always something that kind of annoyed me because I flip it over and I'm like, oh no, one of our characters just randomly died and we lost that character. It's not a huge deal, but I guess it's just something that doesn't feel super good about the game. I enjoy the combat, the way you roll the dice, the way you're going to be attaching them and utilizing your ability to make fans, and of course utilizing these cards, which are just hyped up action cards that are powerful that you can only have three of. Uh, but overall, yeah, it's a very satisfying and very fun game. Uh, being able to play this game multiple times at a 120 to 180 minute time frame is a good it's a good recommendation. If you're able to get through that, especially as a review copy, then you know this is gonna be a lot of fun when it hits the shelves. So if you don't mind a long game, you don't mind the thematic violence, there's blood, there's gore, there's guts. So for 18 and up, I mean, I don't know, as a kid, 16 and up was fine with me. I guess it's based on your parents, but I would just say that this is going to be a bloody, gory type of a board game, and there's a lot of combat and take that and aggressive nature, so this is not for people who do not like a lot of combat, a lot of aggressive actions, and nasty things that can happen. Other than that, though, yes, the Horror Game Show is an excellent game, and I look forward to taking a look at it on Kickstarter. And if you want to, there's a link down below. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the Horror Game Show. If you'd like to take a look, like I said before, go right down there. You can also go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. And if we earned your subscription and you've seen more than one of our videos here, I would greatly appreciate it if you did please subscribe. It does help us out greatly on this channel. It helps us improve our videos, helps us make more content. So yes, if you think that you've seen more than one, go ahead and do it for us. Check out our live streams every Sunday and Wednesday. Sunday is on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook, and Wednesday is on Whatnot. Both links will be down below in the description, 6.30 p.m. PST. Our website has reviews, and of course, we have Instagram and Twitter if you want to see more content. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to killing everybody next time.